Hi, I'm Jen Grover, and this is my dog Rocky. On this week's episode of Tab Talk, I'm going to share with you some tips to help you get the most out of traveling with your furry friend. Make sure you stay tuned until the end because I'm going to actually share with you one of the things I do with Rocky that helps keep things fresh and enjoyable for him. Um, I'm going to open a bark box for you and show you what's inside and how much he loves everything that's involved. Stay tuned. Most people want to know, how can I take my pet with me and make it enjoyable for my pet and for me with the peace of mind of knowing that they'll be secure even if I have to leave them in the RV? Rocky has gone with me on most trips. There was um, two, two occasions when he did not come with me. Back when he was a puppy, he was just a few months old, less than a year, I decided to leave him at home and I left him with my sister-in-law and my brother because they have another Shih Tzu that he is able to enjoy spending time with, his buddy, Mr. Bingley. He wasn't quite ready to behave himself in a campground. And by behave himself, uh, that primarily for me meant that I didn't have the confidence that he would be quiet, that he wouldn't bark at everything and everybody and every critter that went by. I wasn't so worried about him being unruly because Let's face it, a 15 pound dog isn't difficult to control, where a lab or a bigger dog might be a bit more of a challenge. But I wasn't 100% sure how he would interact with campers yet or with other dogs. So I decided to leave him with my sister-in-law and my brother. He did great and was thrilled when I got home. The second time I left him behind was when I went to Wyoming in the summer. My plan included five days inside of Yellowstone National Park. Now, if you haven't been to Yellowstone National Park, it is a huge park, like nearly the size of Western Pennsylvania. And I knew that my days were gonna be long days in the car, that I'd have to leave him in the car. I couldn't take him near the thermal features or on trails. So I decided the best option for him would be to leave him behind. I could have alternatively looked for a kennel or a dog sitter close by but that seemed like not the right answer for us because we were also going to go to the Tetons and other places where Rocky wouldn't be welcome. It's too hot that time of year to leave him in the car so I decided to leave him behind. I did that knowing it was the right decision for Rocky but truthfully I really missed him. I hate having to leave him behind but sometimes we have to make the right decisions for our pets and for ourselves for our travel plans. Now, I do like to travel in the fall, so temperatures are a bit colder and it can often be safe to leave him in the car. He has a nice little booster seat and I'll put a link for it, it's called a snoozer. I put that right in the front seat if I'm alone or in the back seat if Nina's with me. And he loves to sit in it. Actually, he just sleeps in it. He loves it. Even if I pull it out when we go, I've brought it with me when I've gone to new camp and set it up in an office and he's gone right in and taken a nap in it or when I go visit other people, he loves that car seat. So it's not at all a discomfort for him to be left in the car. But I only do that if the temperatures are low enough that it's completely safe. And that's usually cold weather when I'm wearing a coat. Other than that, I do like to hike with Rocky and Rocky loves to hike. The longest hike Rocky's ever been on is a seven mile hike with a 2,500 foot elevation gain. I think he slept for two days after that, but he loved it. He loves running around in the mountain streams and exploring and smelling all the smells in nature. But there are a few things you should know if you're traveling with a pet. First of all, most national parks don't welcome pets on trails. You may be able to have them at roadside stops or in the campground, but not if you're gonna hike in a national park. There are a couple exceptions. There are trails at Cuyahoga Valley National Park in Ohio, for example, where you can bring dogs. Great Sand Dunes National Park in Colorado lets you bring dogs, and Rocky loved that park. If you go into Canada, the rules are a bit different. I was able to bring Rocky anywhere I went in Banff National Park. Now, I think buildings would be an exception, but we didn't really go into buildings. He loved it. So lesson number one is to find out what the restrictions are regarding pets where you're traveling to. Number two, 
Consider the time of year. You've heard me already mention temperature a couple times. It's difficult to travel with pets in the summer. You have to worry about heat, not only in your tow vehicle, but in your camper. So for example, if you go to Zion National Park at the Watchman Campground, they have electricity so you can run your air conditioning. I found in my old tab, the air conditioning couldn't keep up when temperatures were above 95 degrees. It's understandable. Truthfully, your, your air conditioners are designed to lower temperatures by about 20 degrees below the outside temperature, if it's functioning well. I was very uncomfortable with the heat leaving Rocky. So what I did to mitigate that was I got up early and hiked before sunrise, came back before 10 o'clock in the morning, and then we'd take the afternoon and do scenic drives. There's a nice area called the Kolob Terrace at Zion National Park. We went up there and explored and went to some other areas where Rocky could be in an air-conditioned vehicle with me. Truthfully, I'm not much of a fan of being out in 100 plus degree hikes either. So it was a win-win. The second thing you want to consider with temperature is will it be too cold? When I got to Canada, I had a coat for Rocky, but it wasn't quite warm enough, so I ended up picking him up a parka. I know that sounds crazy, but it did get pretty cold, and it got cold so quickly, I think he wasn't able to adjust like he normally does as the seasons change in Western Pennsylvania. Know what the dangers are for temperature and make sure that you account for them. Number three, be aware that particularly when you're camping in the West, you need to be aware of wildfires. During wildfire season, I try to avoid leaving Rocky in the trailer by himself at any time. There are times I'll do it very briefly when I feel like the area is safe and when I feel like the weather is safe. But as a rule, when it's fire season, I don't like to leave Rocky behind. You never know when a fire is going to start up and sometimes they start up and they take off before you would even have a chance to get back. So that's something I keep in mind. The same could be said if you're in an area where that's prone to flash flooding, you wouldn't wanna leave your pet behind in a camper and have them risk drowning. Number four, always travel with your dog or your cat's shot records. It's important because most of the time, truthfully, you're not gonna be asked to provide those but there will be that one time you need it and if you don't have it you're really going to regret not having it on hand it's just easier i keep a set right in the glove box as well as i upload a copy to my cloud storage space so that i can always easily access it from my phone number five make sure that when you introduce your pet to the tab it's a great experience don't just arrive at the campsite and throw your dog or cat in the tab for the first time. Give them a chance to get to know the tab, to enjoy it, and to associate it with good things in their mind. For example, when Rocky was a puppy, I started introducing him to the tab by putting treats on the outside step so that he was curious. Then I'd put treats inside so that he wanted to go inside. Once he got inside, I'd put treats up on the bench and he'd come up. And then I picked up some special toys for the tab. That way when he comes here, he has special toys that are fun and exciting for him. It's all about creating a positive experience for your dog in the camper so that they're excited when they go. Now, I don't have a cat in my tab, but I have owned cats before. And every cat is so uniquely different. Some won't mind it at all. Some will not be thrilled with it at all. So you're gonna have to play that by ear. But I recommend introducing your tab, if at all possible, to your pet before you get to the campground and give them a chance to be comfortable. One of the things I did when Rocky was a pup to help acclimate him was come out to the tab and watch TV together, just hang and be casual. And he really started to enjoy that. Next, make sure you clean up after your pet. It should go without saying, yet I go to campgrounds all the times where people don't clean up after their pets. I always have a roll of bags stuffed inside of the tab waiting in case I need it. I also keep some in the car for the same reason. Next, make sure that you're able to control your dog. Again, it should go without saying, but some people think simply having a dog on a leash is a solution. Well, that's not a solution if you can't handle the dog. Dogs are bigger dogs that are a little more robust and that can break free, can be dangerous to people. They can knock them over, they can scare them. 
in some cases they can become confused or a little disoriented, which may lead them to biting somebody, and you don't want that. I always know people haven't met Rocky when they say he's so sweet, because he's really not the sweetest dog in the world. He is to me, but not necessarily to strangers. I had to spend a lot of time working with Rocky, and it, that involved taking him to professional training to help work on his socialization skills. He's not a friendly dog by nature. He's come a long way. If you knew him as a pup and met him today, you'd really see a difference. But it's important that you're able to control your pet, and I wanted that confidence with Rocky. We've worked a lot on what trainers will refer to as voice control, meaning I can tell Rocky to sit, stay, come, and he'll do it without having a leash on. I like that because if the leash were to slip my hand or if we're in a situation where we're caught off guard, he's gonna listen to me, he's gonna look to me for direction. And that takes a lot of time, but it's worth the investment. Lastly, be a good neighbor. If your dog is a barker and can't be quiet in a campground, and I'm not talking about the occasional bark, they're dogs, right? I'm talking about the dogs that bark nonstop. Don't bring your dog with you. I actually ran some tests with Rocky to see if he would bark when I wasn't there before I actually left him. I would pull out of the site with my tow vehicle so he thought I was gone and then walk back and listen. You could also set up a camera to record to check your dog's behavior or if you have an opportunity where you have good friends you're camping with you could leave and let the neighbors listen for the dog to see if it's noticeable. Thankfully, Rocky really isn't much of a barker, especially if I'm not here. He's more likely to bark if I'm here and then I can control him. But for the sake of the other people in the campground, make sure you don't have a dog that barks incessantly. I was at a campground this fall that had a dog that was just a barker and it was so annoying. So spare everybody else the pain of listening to your dog bark if they're a barker. Leave them at home until they're trained not to. Well, I promised you I was gonna show you one of the things that helps keep things fresh for Rocky when we go camping. And that is maybe a dog subscription service or buying new toys or new treats. I subscribed to BarkBox for the first time this year and I have a brand new BarkBox that just came last week that I saved because I knew we were camping and I knew he would enjoy seeing what was inside of it. He's asleep right now but the minute I squeak the toy, you'll see him get up. So here it is, I've only unsealed it, I haven't removed anything. Each box comes with a theme, this one's the Australian Outbark, and they come with two toys. The toys vary depending on the size of your dog. I'm gonna pull one out. Here we've got a little kangaroo, it's got a little pouch there, and they always have squeakers and crinkly. And you can see, guess who's interested? He's awfully excited to get a new toy, so I'm gonna Remove the plastic tag for him. Come on, Rocky, come get it. And you can see he's pretty excited. Can't see his tail, but it's wagging. So I'm gonna give him the new toy there. And then we have another one that we pull the tag off that looks like a something. Somebody probably will be able to tell me what this is, but that's his second new toy. And some of them he loves more than others, but he loves them all because they all crinkle and squeak and he's already taken that one from my hand. In addition, they all come with a chew stick. Each box comes with a couple kinds of treats. So we have Dinkum Ducky Tucker, which is a duck uh, recipe, duck recipe dog treats with carrots. And then this one is Turkey Pumpkin Stew. I bet he'll like that, he likes poultry tells me it's wheat free, soy free, corn free, and grain free. So if your dog has some allergy issues, you'll be all set. I always save the chew stick for a time when I think Rocky's gonna be getting restless or bored, and I'd break that out then. So anyway, that's one way I keep things fresh. Um, I've been, subs I've subscribed to BarkBox for a few months now. I signed up when they did the Scooby-Doo Scooby theme box and we have a blast with them. You may have seen a picture of Rocky with an Uncle Sam hat. That was something I bought as an add-on. You can buy add-ons as well. And he liked that because it was not only a hat, but it's a toy, it also crinkled. So it's lots of fun for the dogs to have new toys when they go camping. I know some people travel with little dogs, some people travel with big dogs. My friend Signe has 
two beautiful Bernese Mountain Dogs. She usually brings one, either Bindi or Gus, and they are just sweethearts. They're huge, but they fit in the tab with her. I, of course, bring Rocky. Other people I've seen bring, I see a lot of Labs. I see a lot of Doodles, a lot of Australian Shepherd Dogs, thing, dogs like that. And I've seen a lot more people starting to travel with their cats. So I'm curious what pet you travel with and how do you make them happy when you're traveling? What do you do? Do you leave them behind? How do you handle it if you're going to a national park that doesn't allow your pet to go on trails? I'd love to hear what you're doing with your pets. And one thing I should mention is that Rocky actually has his own Instagram account. I put a link in the description below, but it's Have Rocky Will Travel on Instagram. And I try to post pictures of him. Sometimes I'll do a whole bunch in a row. Sometimes there'll be a bit of a gap, but it's a fairly active Instagram account and you can keep up with Rocky and his shenanigans on there. I hope this video answered questions you may have had about traveling with your pet and what it's like to take a dog and acclimate them to a new RV. Thanks for watching.